Who is my God? He is a God who can be both good and evil. Just as you possess both of these forces, good and evil within yourself, so does my God. He is a mighty God who pulls my will toward His purpose, leading us to the ultimate goal. When most of us align more closely with one of these two forces, good or evil, our fate follows, taking us down the path we have accepted. Thus, through our good or bad desires, we shape our future into something beautiful or ugly, and this God is the one we have envisioned from the beginning. These two forces, good and evil, are with us from birth, but it is upbringing that creates differences among children, shaping their beliefs as adults to see their future through one of these two perspectives. Our God is one we reveal in both peace and war, and this mindset shows that we create our own God. The God we accept in our thoughts shapes our future through our actions and words. In times of peace when we shake hands in friendship and in times of war when we draw swords against each other, know that the aggressor is the wrongdoer, the one who takes your rights and commits crimes against you. Thus, for most of us, our God is a selfish one, and with this inner selfishness we will never unite unless our God is not selfish. Only then can we create a beautiful world together when my God wishes to see the world of his neighbor flourish. This can only happen through inner reflection, and we demonstrate it through our words and actions. In the end, know that in the battle between good and evil, every human soul will either experience freedom or face severe torment after death. This outcome is the result of your actions, shaped by the God you embraced in life, whether it was the God of light or the God of darkness. The God you accepted will either grant you the freedom of light or subject you to the suffering of darkness. This is where the gods draw their power, turning our material world into one of light or shadow. This shows us that we, as humans, play a role in shaping our own future. Every decision we make shapes both our past and future. Our destiny lies in our hands, determined by which of these two inner gods we embrace most. And the only God who holds both the powers of good and evil within is Zurvan. As we pass through the seven stages toward his sacred temple, bowing toward the North Star, we understand that he is illuminated or dimmed by our actions, and know that, according to ancient myths, this North Star once shone brightly. The currently dim North Star, which connects positive and negative parallel worlds, acts as a gateway for the exchange of opposing forces. These forces, moving in opposite directions in both the atomic core and the vast cosmos, pass through this portal to achieve balance. While these forces must not mix, they travel through the gateway, where positive energy entering from one side becomes negative energy upon exit. This process is accepted in physics only if both the luminous and dark forces pass directly through the central portal, with one enveloping the other. This alignment of the forces is critical, as it determines whether the star becomes a shining beacon or a dormant black hole much like the currently dark North Star that we recognize today, which moves through the heavens and shifts position among the northern celestial points. This force, anchored to Earth's 23.5 degree tilt, pulls our planet around the Milky Way galaxy. And know this. The gateway is everywhere. Whether you look into the atomic nucleus or gaze upon parallel worlds beyond the cosmos, you will find it present in you, in me, and in all of us. When we ignite the core of our inner being with love, the cosmic core of Zurvan is also illuminated. Through this interconnected act, we will once again see the North Star shining brightly in the universe. Just as Zurvan is an idea that is rooted in the depths of our thoughts, we connect with him through the origin that resides in every cell of our brain, whether human or any other creature. Through our thoughts, words, and actions, we strive to achieve the goals we truly desire. The idea that we all have the power to shape our destiny, just like Zurvan embodies the forces of creation, is truly empowering. It is as if the cosmic brush reaches our hands, and everything is in our hands to create our own masterpiece. It doesn't matter whether we choose to paint vibrant colors of kindness or draw shadows of mischief, the choice is ours. And in my mind, if Zorvan were speaking at a conference, I imagine the title would be Finding Balance, The Art of a Cosmic Creator. 
And if Zervan had a favorite snack, I bet it would be a cosmic combination of sweet and sour, just like the balance of light and dark forces he represents. And if Zervan had a resume, it might read, expert in cosmic balance, creator of good and evil, and part-time arbiter of celestial battles. I mean, who wouldn't want to work for a god with this diverse skill set? It's like we've been given the ultimate cosmic remote control. Do we tune into the kindness channel or go to the chaos station? Now, if we were to summarize this cosmic journey, it might be, choose wisely, for the God within you is waiting to be revealed. And remember, even in the darkest of times, the North Star is still there waiting to shine again. Thus, Zurvan, the God of time and infinity, represents the expanse of sky and space which is associated with bringing hot and cold periods with the 12,000-year time efficiency of the world clock, and especially the polar shift of the Earth. This is the same force that presides over the balance of light and darkness, good and evil, atoms and the cosmos, granting humans the freedom to shape their destiny through the mirror of their actions and determine the future of the world. This perspective, where God is in everything and everything is in God, serves as the source from which we can introduce atoms as the building blocks of both the material and spiritual realms, reflecting the unity of forces in the universe. God can be envisioned as the ultimate source of balance and harmony, embodying the final judgment between the dual forces of creation and destruction, light and darkness, good and evil. This cosmic stage is akin to the role of Zervan, who is symbolized by the North Star. Through the display of light or darkness upon this wandering celestial point, Zervan, the cosmic god, reveals or conceals himself in the grand tableau of the universe, representing the governing force of the world. Where this star shines, light reigns over darkness, and where it remains dim, darkness prevails over light. Conclusion The god we accept in our imagination, whether, like most religious traditions, we envision God as the embodiment of goodness, or, as in Satanism, see him as the personification of evil, or in some rare cases, recognize God as possessing both powers of good and evil, or even those who do not accept God and see him as empty, ultimately leads us to the same truth even to vanity. God is seen as a supreme judge, one who decides our fate. In the end, we reap the rewards or suffer the consequences of our actions whether good or bad, based on how we utilize the time and opportunities we were given in life. Thus, the way we perceive God shapes our understanding of divinity in the realm of consciousness. Whether we see Him as purely good, purely evil, or a balance of both, or see Him as empty or nothing, it is our actions and thoughts that ultimately bring forth our destiny. In essence, God reflects the shape of our own beliefs, and the form in which we see Him is the form he takes within the awareness of our world. The reader is invited to delve deeper into this cosmic connection, exploring how the forces of light and darkness shape our destiny and the stars themselves. Will we reignite the North Star within, or remain lost in the shadows?